direction of life. And they that have done evil, the people just remain their natural self with their normal Adamic nature, with their evil propensities. And they didn't even desire any change, neither did they have any change. They that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I pray yours will be the resurrection of life. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24. Acts, chapter 24, reading from verse 14. There is the resurrection. Again, that's a mystery to many people in the world, but for us, that already is a revelation. Acts chapter 24, verse 14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead. There shall be a resurrection of the dead. That's the future change that is going to take place. That is when all the bodies of the men and the women, of the children, of the boys, of the girls, of everyone that ever died. And those bodies have decomposed. Or some were born and turned into ashes. Or some were drowned in the river by the mighty power of God. And the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God. He collects all the atoms and all the molecules of those decomposed bodies together. And makes them body, soul, and spirit again. The same people coming back again to life. It says there's going to be a resurrection of the dead. And then it says in that verse 15, both of who and who? The just and the unjust. That's a mystery. That's a mystery. The people who are there on the streets walking up and down and the people who get into all these uh, evil things and they're living their lives in sinful ways, you talk to them and you say, don't you know that this is an unjust life, unrighteous life, impure life, this is an unsafe life? Oh, he says, what do I care about that? I just want to enjoy my life because once you die, you die. The animal dies and men die and women die and children die. And if you say, do you know that you are going to cut your life short by what you are doing and this is very dangerous to you. This is deadly. Oh, he says, if you live carefully, you are going to die. If you live carelessly, you are going to die. If you are reckless, you are going to die. If you are peaceful, you are going to die. So why not go for it, whatever it is? Do you know that if you live an unrighteous life, an unjust life, if you die like that, then when the resurrection takes place, it's going to be the resurrection of damnation or the resurrection to damnation. Resurrection? What is that? Then you try to explain. It says, <laughs> you've lost me. I don't understand that. For me, that is what? A mystery for us the revelation and it's because we have that revelation there's going to be the resurrection of the just and the resurrection of the unjust that's the reason why we get the grace of god into our lives so that that grace will come into us and produce godliness in our lives i'm reading verse 15 again and have hope toward god which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead both of the just and unjust. And herein do I exercise myself. Because of my understanding of that revelation. That there's going to be a resurrection of the dead. And because of my firm belief. That there's going to be a resurrection of the just. And then a resurrection of the unjust. Because of that I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God. God and toward men. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. We're reading from verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. This first resurrection, that's the resurrection of the just, the resurrection of the righteous, 
the resurrection of those who truly belong to the Lord, the resurrection of true Christians who died and they were still holding on to the faith by the time they died. It says, blessed. And what's the next word? Holy. If we're going to take part in that resurrection of the just, there must be that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And now Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Let your commitment show that you are risen with Christ spiritually. And let the passion of your soul and the purpose and the direction of your life and the desires you have, let those things show that you really belong to the Lord. If you have risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on what? On things above. Set your affection on things above. When you look at your leanings, and you look at where your love is, you look at what you are interested in, you're asking yourself, are those things above or are those things beneath? Are those things of the flesh here below or are those things of the spirit there above? When you put all your interest on making money just for yourself, you ask yourself, is this setting my affection on things beneath or things above? When all the things you do in this world will take you away from serving the Lord here, you're asking yourself, is that setting my affection on things above or things on the earth? But because we're expecting the coming of the Lord, we must set our affections on things above. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall, shall do what? It's talking about his coming again. When he shall appear, it says then, shall we also appear with him in glory. We'll appear with him in glory. And great will be our reward for the things we have done for the glory of his name. In Daniel chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth. That's, they have died. They have been buried. And now the language is, they're sleeping. And if you're sleeping, you'll wake up. That's talking about resurrection. They sleep in the dust of the earth. In that verse 2, it says, they shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Again, he's saying that there's going to be a resurrection. The people who have done what ought to be done because of the presence of the grace of God in their lives, they will have the resurrection of life. And it says, they shall wake up to everlasting life. And then those who have not given their lives to the Lord, who have not lived for the glory of God, they will be their eternal regret because they'll wake up to shame and everlasting contempt. In verse 3, and they that be wise, I pray you'll be wise. I said you'll be wise. When you think about the future, when you think about what I'm doing now, if I... You have received the message from our pastor. Pastor W. F. Kumoye, the General Superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your heart. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week. 
by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.